Hello, today I'm doing a little bit of an electronics project um, for green power racing batteries. Uh, one of the things that school does is a uh, green power, basically electric racing car. But it does mean when you take it on an event, you end up at the end of the day with probably about 10 or 12 of these 12 volt batteries all needing charging at once. We've got a couple of these fast chargers but they're quite expensive. I've also got some solar panels um, and I can charge two at once with one of the solar panels but it's quite a slow charge. The fast chargers charge at 8 amps and this charges about 1 amp. So what I actually wanted to do was find a way of connecting one of these fast smart chargers to a bank of batteries and have it connected to each one in turn to charge them up one after the other because if you don't you have to um, plug them in separately and then wait for it to charge and then come along and disconnect it and reconnect it which is a bit fiddly and means you can't really leave it to do its own thing. I started having a look at this a few days ago and I really wanted to use a MOSFET to connect the charger to the battery. I did give it a go but what was happening um, I knew that there would be some feed through from the body diode of the MOSFET which was actually going to be powering the Arduino which is going to control the whole thing but it also meant that with the MOSFET switched off the charger was actually seeing the voltage from the battery to a certain extent but then when it connected um, and started charging um, it couldn't actually pass any current so it was going into a kind of this battery's broken sort of mode which wasn't really what I wanted to do. So then I went for a second version which involved using two MOSFETs, this apparently is a um, fairly recognised technique where you put two MOSFETs with the sources connected together um, and control them both, switch them on at once, which means that the body diodes are in reverse polarity so there's no current at all when they're switched off. Um, but that was getting sort of a little bit too complicated and I was going to need to have enough voltage to power them and I was ending up needing to reference everything to the positive supply, which was then making the measurement of the voltage of the battery complicated and the powering of the Arduino complicated. So my final idea was to basically make it nice and simple and old school and use a relay to connect the charger to each battery in turn. Um, the other thing is I found that these relays, a 12 volt 10 amp relay, um, was only about one pound, I think. Um, the MOSFETs themselves were starting to be about a pound if I wanted. I needed to get logic level versions um, and I was going to need two of them. So not only was it starting to be fiddly, it was getting more expensive and harder to design properly. Um, whereas this seemed to be quite straightforward. Okay, so this is what the relay looks like. You can see it says 12 amps at 250 volts AC, uh, 15 amps at 24 volts DC. Actually, it will switch, um, but it's a 12 volt coil. So I came up with a rough layout diagram um, of how to arrange it on uh, basically strip board with the copper strips going horizontally that way, um, which meant I could have a common connection all the way through with one each of these one after the other common connection all the way through for the negative and a common connection all the way through for the charger positive um, and then take off the pins for controlling the relay and for measuring the battery voltage and also a pin uh, a connection from the battery through a diode which is going to be um, the power supply for the Arduino. Once I got the design basically sorted I started drilling holes in this um, piece of strip board um, so effectively I've made holes for the relays and for putting larger wires in for the uh, battery connections. Um, now the holes in this type of board are on a 0.1 inch matrix, so 2.54 millimetres. Um, normally when you buy components they tend to be on the same kind of layout, but these turn out to be something like 12 millimeters between the pins instead of 12.4 or something like that no 12.2 i think it is um but anyway they're not quite on the slight on the right size so what i've had to do is drill out the holes bigger so that these will just about go in and especially the front pin um, is actually only two millimeters apart from the two behind it which definitely doesn't fit on a 2.5 millimeter hole so I've had to drill a special hole just here, which is kind of in between 
the two rows of holes so that this single pin will fit in it. And it just about seems to fit. And this is the Arduino that I'm planning to use. Uh, it's a Pro Mini. Um, it says on the back, 16 megahertz, five volts. Now I'm not completely sure whether I've disconnected the track between that LED and the little resistor. That was the one that indicates that the power is on. And I have a feeling I went through some of these Arduinos and disconnected those two so that it didn't draw as much power. Uh, this is the voltage regulator, I think. This one says BAOH. I think that's the voltage regulator. Um, but I think I disconnected the LED so that it uh, drew less power when it was uh, switched off. This is the approximate layout that I want for the relay on this side of the board. So I've got one relay here, then there'll be another one just there, another one here, and then this end of the board will be used for the Arduino. And then if I turn it up the other way, I'm going to arrange it in a sort of mirror image with the relay twisted around through 180 degrees. Like this, the only real difference, so you can just see the components down there, the only real difference is that this um, transistor will have to be the opposite way around to the one over here. So all I really need to do now is cut away some of these tracks like I've done on this side and start soldering the components through. Well, I've got most of the components on. I'm still missing the transistor and one of the resistors and a capacitor. Um, and also the Arduino. And actually, I, I drilled out these holes and I left a space for the ground pin uh, and then realised I had the thing upside down. So I had to kind of slightly adjust where I was going to put it. But hopefully that will come out in the wash. Um, but I think it's going to be too long for me to finish it off today. So I will come back to this another time.